Hi, fifth graders. This is the seed anatomy and dispersal notes page. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to watch this screencast while you have the seed anatomy and dispersal notes in front of you. You're going to take notes while you watch. Then there are a couple of questions at the bottom of this page, and you are going to answer them and then discuss them with Miss Manning to get signed off on your grid. So let's get started. We're going to use a couple of websites. This first one is from the BBC, and it shows the inside of a seed. So if we look at this seed, this is basically the inside of a bean. And if you look inside, you will see that it has these main parts. We've got an embryo right here, which is the young root and shoot that's going to become the adult plant. And it also is like to think of it as the baby plant because if you look right here you see little tiny leaves and this is going to be the stems with the roots and the shoots. Um, we also have this big area. It's the biggest part of the seed. It's called the food store or like food storage. Those are similar words. And so that is where the starch is kept that provides energy for this baby plant to grow until it is able to carry out its own photosynthesis. So in order to get energy, this baby plant uses the energy that's stored here in the food storage. Then once it gets tall enough to poke its head out above the soil, like your seedlings are doing right now, then it's able to start using the sun to get the sun's energy through photosynthesis. But before that happens, while it's still underground in the dark, it has this handy food storage that gives it the energy that it needs. And finally, on the outside, you will see something called a seed coat. It's a tough protective coating on the outside that protects the seed from things that might harm it. So right now, we're going to take some time to look at your notes and go ahead and write down um, some definitions of the seed coat, the food storage, and the embryo. Pause this video and start it back up when you're ready to move on to germination. So now let's talk about germination. Germination is just kind of a fancy word for sprouting. So you might hear me in class talk about sprouting and germination and using the word the same way. It's basically just a process where the seed begins to develop into a new plant. The baby embryo starts to poke out of the seed coat and starts to grow. So that's the germination. And that is a process that is controlled by chemicals or enzymes that are inside the seed. We need three things for germination to happen. Wow. W -O -W. We need water that lets the seed swell and the embryo starts to grow. We need oxygen in the air that helps the plant breathe. And we need warmth, which increases the growth weight and the chemicals that are inside the cell, inside the seed, so that it can grow quickly. Um, but it can't be too hot, otherwise that would kill the seedling. So basically the seeds use the food storage that's inside this big area until the seedlings are big enough to produce their own food by photosynthesis. So take some time right now to make sure that you get a nice definition of germination here. Um, so something like this, a process where the seeds start to develop into a new plant, or what li I like to say, basically just sprouting. All right, now that you've learned something about seed anatomy, let's move on to seed dispersal, which is how do plants spread their seeds? So we're gonna use a different website right now from one of my favorite places, the Missouri Botanical Garden, which is a great place in St. Louis if you ever visit. They have a great website that describes lots of things about plants, so we're gonna use it to learn a little bit about how um, how plants spread their seeds around. There are lots of ways that they do it. So I'm gonna ask you to write down some examples of different seed dispersal methods in this grid right here. So let's start with animal dispersal. Um, you'll find that on your paper all the way to the right. So animals are a very common way for plants to spread their seeds. Uh, here you have this an example of a seed. It's kind of like a burr. If you look, you'll see little bar 
barbs or hooks sticking out of the seed. Um, you may have had the experience at Laredo Taft of getting burrs stuck on your fleece jacket or maybe in your hair because they have those hooks that really get tangled in animals fur or feathers and so when they get stuck on an animal or a person they get carried to a new location and then eventually they might fall off in the new location and then eventually start to germinate or sprout in the new location. So on your paper you might want to write down an example it would be a burr that is carried on fur. Remember pause this video if you ever need to and repeat it if you want uh, to hear again what you should write down. Um, another common way that seeds disperse plants is by wind dispersal. So this is a dandelion. It's going to look really familiar. Let's play this video, a little time lapse of a dandelion. There they go. Ooh, nice picture. So what you see with a dandelion dispersed by the wind it has a little parachute fluffy things at the top that act like a parachute to catch the air to help spread the uh, seed to a new location. Other things that you might find on a seed that's dispersed by wind might be like a wing if you think of the helicopters that you see from a maple tree uh, those have nice wings on them that help them fly to a new distance. On your paper write down um, an example of wind. I've already written it down for you. You could write down a maple seed as well. So these have to have either a parachute or a wing or something else that will catch the air to allow the seed to move to a new location. Water is a way that some seeds spread, um, especially for plants that live on or near a river or the ocean or a stream. So you can imagine that when the seeds are ready, they get dropped into the water. And they usually have to be surrounded by something, a material that's less dense than water that allows the seed to float. And it floats downstream, floats on the waves to get to a new location, and then it might sprout in that new location. A coconut is a good example of that. Go ahead and write down your example of coconut here and um, write down a little brief description of what that seed needs to get from one place to another. You might need to rewind to get a hint. Lastly, this is kind of fun. Some plants disperse their seeds um, with a little bit of explosion, kind of like shooting seeds out of pots. This is a quick video. Let's look. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there goes another one. There goes another one. Um, hopefully later uh, you will see more examples of this because this is one of the more spectacular ways that plants spread their seeds. But on this paper I call it explosive slash self-dispersal where the seeds pop out of the plant at high pressure. And that can get them going really pretty far in distances. So you really need to have some pressure that squirts the seeds out kind of a far distance. One of my favorite examples of a plant that disperses via explosive self-dispersal is a plant with a funny name. It's called a squirting cucumber. Um, so you can go ahead and write that down. And we'll probably see videos of a squirting cucumber later on in this grid. Um, so go ahead, do a little thinking right now, write your answers to these questions down here, and then show it to Miss Manning to sign off on your grid. Good job.